Hi guys, this is Live English Coach and me, Anastasia Chapel. In this video lesson, we will talk about stative and dynamic verbs, about verbs which express more states rather than actions, and vice versa, about verbs that express more actions rather than states. Our lecture today consists of four parts. We'll talk about dynamic verbs. These are the verbs which express actions. Um, the majority of verbs in English are dynamic, so we are lucky here. Um, when we talk about actions, we mean, actually, actions. So we can clearly see that something is happening. We can see the verb, we can picture the meaning, we can see the action happening. We can imagine, when we hear the verb, we can imagine an action happening. So that's, that's what means dynamic verbs, action verbs. We'll also look at stative verbs. Some verbs in English express more states rather than actions. So if you compare them to dynamic verbs, they are weaker. They are slightly weaker, but they are still verbs. We'll look at that. Then we'll move on to verbs that can have two meanings. There are certain verbs in English, not a lot, but they do exist. And these verbs have two meanings, so they can be both dynamic and stative, depending on the context, depending on what we mean uh, by using this verb. And at last we'll look at stative verbs that can be used with um, a dynamic shade in meaning. So normally they are stative, they, they are weaker than action verbs, they express states rather than actions, but sometimes Depending on our context, we can add a shade of a dynamic usage to them. So let's get started. We're going to start with dynamic verbs. Dynamic verbs express an action, so they express what we do, or an event which is happening, so they can express what happens. Uh, always or what is happening at the moment. Uh, the majority of verbs in English are dynamic. And these verbs can be used in any tense and in any tense form, in any tense aspect. So both simple and continuous. So we can, if we need to, we can add ing ending to these verbs. For example, she broke her leg when she was skiing. Yeah, we have two verbs here. She broke her leg break, broke, broken, yeah, it's irregular, but it's dynamic. We can clearly picture the action, the action of breaking her leg. She broke her leg while she was skiing. The verb to ski here expresses a continuous process, right? She was in a process of skiing when suddenly she fell down and broke her leg. So the second verb is also a dynamic verb. And in order to give this aspect of a process, uh, it's okay, it's correct, and we actually need to use the continuous form of it. Yeah, so we can we can see in this example that dynamic verbs can be used in both simple and continuous aspects. Another example, he lost his watch. To lose, lost, lost. This verb is also regular and it's also dynamic. We can clearly picture this idea, this image of losing something. We know it's, it's a concrete action to lose something. Um, there are also other dynamic verbs. Like I said, the majority of them are dynamic verbs, so they express some concrete action that we can clearly picture in our heads. It can be break or disappear or explode or play or walk or work, many, many others. Uh, and we can use them, like I said, in the simple and continuous aspect. This is the, the main idea behind dynamic verbs, that we can, they're multifunctional. So if we have a process, we can add ing and make continuous form. If we just have a fact, we can, we can use the simple form. English learners normally don't have any difficulties with dynamic verbs. They're quite easy to detect. Where difficulties occur is with stative verbs, so let's talk about that. Part number two, stative verbs. 
Stative verbs, like we discussed before, are verbs that express a state rather than an action. So there is something in the verb that tells us that it's not as physical, that is, it's not as clear, not as strong as an action, because it's actually not an action. We can't touch it, we can't feel it, we can't so clearly picture it. For example, um, stative verbs can express thoughts. What are these verbs? What can they be? For example, believe. Полагать, верить. I believe I can fly. Or I don't believe in love. We can't use believe in continuous form because it's a stative verb and it means our thought. Next one is doubt. Сомневаться в чем-то. For example, I doubt he is right. Сомневаюсь я, что он прав. Although we are talking about something that is happening now, maybe somebody is asking for our opinion right now, but we can't use this verb in continuous. I doubt he is right. Next one is to know. Uh, how long have you known her? I've known her all my life. Although we have for how long or how long and although we have all my life, we can't use continuous form. Another one is realize. Do you realize you're making a mistake? Осознаешь ли ты, что ты совершаешь огромную ошибку? Although, again, we're talking about something happening now and somebody's asking us right now, do you realize we can't say, um, we can't give this idea, we can't say uh, continue, in continuous. We can't say, are you realizing? It's not okay for English. Next one is seem. It seems like something is off, or it seems like something is strange. Что-то не то, да? Кажется, что что-то не то происходит, что-то странное. It seems something is off. It's another example of the verb which expresses our thoughts, and we can't use it in continuous. To suppose, полагать. I suppose so. I suppose so, yes. Полагаю, что да. Again, we are being asked at this particular moment, but we can't use this verb in continuous because it's a stative verb. And another one, the last one, understand, a very popular one. Do you understand what I mean? Do you see what I mean? Oh yes, sure, I see what you mean. Stative verbs can also express perceptions, восприятие, наше восприятие чего-то. For example, smell. What are you cooking? It smells lovely. Although you are cooking right now, but because it's our perception of the smell, we think something smells nice. We perceive it that way. We like it. We think it smells good. So we can't put smell in continuous because it's our perception. It's a state of perception. If we had a sentence something like, I am smelling the flowers or look your child is smelling the flowers it may be a problem because she's allergic to flowers and she's smelling the flowers right now here it's an action she's smelling them right now she's performing an action of smelling them so we can see what she's doing but in case of perception it's hard it's hard to see we can only feel it yeah and because we can feel it it's not as active a verb as a dynamic verb. That's why we can't say what are you cooking? It is smelling good. That's not correct. What are you cooking? It smells good. It smells lovely. Something has a lovely smell. And another verb here, a very popular one, is sound. For example, that sounds just about right. Звучит как правда. Звучит правдоподобно. Кажется, так и есть. That sounds true, that sounds right, that sounds okay. So, do you like my plan or how does it sound? It sounds good. Как он тебе? Как тебе мой план? Как он тебе? Каким он тебе кажется? Кажется хорошим, да? Звучит хорошо. It sounds good. Again, uh, here, when something sounds good, it's our perception of it. We feel, to us it feels that it's good. To us it feels that it's worth uh, doing or worth trying. It's our perception. The next group of stative verbs means feelings, denotes feelings. For example, deserve. 
That serves him right. He deserves it. He deserves what happened to him. He deserves what he got. Он этого заслуживает. Although to a Russian person it might seem that it's happening right now because we're talking right now about somebody, right? But because this is a verb, which is not actually, well, it is a verb, but it's not an active verb. It's a verb that expresses feelings. Yeah, all these categories, uh, feelings, thoughts, perceptions, this is something non-physical. This is something that we can't touch and we can't picture so quickly in our head. So this is exactly the category that stative verbs denote. Um, next one is hate. For example, oh, I really hate it. Something happened just now, and I, uh, I am now in the process of hating it. This is my feeling. Yeah, I feel hatred towards something. Oh, I hate it. I can't put it in continuous. I can't say I'm hating it. It's not correct. Another verb like this is like. Oh, what do you think of my dress? Oh, to be honest, I'm sorry, but I don't like it. I'm looking at you right now, I'm looking at your dress right now, but I don't like it. We can't put the verb like in continuous. Next verb is need. Do you need my help now? Oh no, thanks, I'm fine just now, but thank you for asking. I don't need your help right now. Prefer. Do you prefer uh, tea or coffee right now, for example? Oh, I would go for some coffee. Thank you. Uh, I'm asking right now, but again, prefer is another verb which expresses feelings. We can't put it in continuous aspect. Another verb like this is want. Do you want anything right now? Can I get you something? Oh, no, thanks. I'm fine. Do you want something right now? We can't say, are you wanting anything? It's not correct. It's another verb that expresses our feelings. It is something non-physical. It is something, uh, you know, which belongs to this non non-physical area of thoughts and feelings and perceptions. So, perception, sorry. So we can't put it in continuous. And the last verb is here, uh, is wish. Uh, for example, I wish you were here right now. I'm somewhere on the beach, I'm calling a friend and I say, oh, it's, so, it's such a pity you're not here. I wish you were here. Although I'm saying, uh, I'm talking about something which is happening right now, I'm expressing my regret. Um, it's my feeling, yeah? That's what I feel. I wish you were here. I can't say I am wishing. It's not correct. I wish you were here. And the last big group of stated verbs um, expresses possession. So all these verbs to belong, to consist, to contain, to include, to own, they express possession. Something belongs to somebody, somebody owns something. Uh, belong, for example, somebody parked his car where he shouldn't have parked it and he's blocked my car and I can't move. So I'm there, I'm standing there at my car and I'm asking, who does this car belong to? Who owns this car? Who is the owner of this car? Although this is something that is happening right now at this very moment and we would like to use, we would want to use a continuous aspect, but we can't uh, in this very case because this is not a dynamic verb. It's another example of a stative verb and it expresses possession. Um, consist and contain, they're almost synonyms. Uh, for example, our lecture today consists of four parts. Yeah, this is what I said at the beginning of the lecture. Uh, contain. This book contains 10 chapters or this book contains um, an explanation or an, an appendix which gives you a very good overview of English grammar tenses. The verb to include. This package holiday includes a free excursion. And the verb to own, which means to have, yeah, to possess, to possess something, to own something, to be the owner of something. It is a synonym of uh, to belong. Who owns this car? Who is the owner of this car? So just to summarize what we've just covered, we talked about stated verbs. 
uh, verbs that are non-physical, verbs that cannot be used in the continuous aspect. These verbs can express thoughts, for example, believe, doubt, know, realize, see, suppose, understand. They can express perceptions, smell, sound, and also express our feelings, deserve, hate, like, need, prefer, want, wish, and possession, belong, consist, contain, include, and own. It has been a nice warm-up. Thank you for listening and now we're coming to the most interesting part of the lecture. We're going to talk about verbs which often get confused by learners of English language because these verbs, depending on their meaning, can be both um, physical and non-physical, can be both dynamic and stative. Let's have a look at that. Here are the most commonly used ones. Be, have, mean, see, smell, think, and taste. Now, next part, I'm going to explain in Russian to avoid any misunderstandings. Глагол be, uh, самый базовый глагол в английском языке, конечно же, его базовое значение это быть, являться, находиться. И в этом значении он у нас stative, мы не можем его использовать uh, во времени continuous. Но иногда глагол be может выражать оттенок поведения или, или само поведение, которое обычно человеку не присуще, но вот сейчас почему-то временно он себя так ведет, то есть на контрасте работает. Обычно он не такой, а сейчас ведет себя как-то глупо, например. Глагол have в своем классическом значении иметь что-то, владеть чем-то, обладать чем-то, да, possession не может использоваться в аспекте continuous. Об этом мы говорили в предыдущей части лекции. Но когда он входит в состав устойчивых фраз, таких как um, have trouble, have dinner, have a shower, так, не иметь душ, а принимать душ, не иметь завтрак, а завтракать, даже в русском языке мы подбираем другие глаголы. Это происходит потому, что глагол have теряет свое первоначальное, основное классическое значение владения чем-то. Следующий глагол mean. Мы можем иметь что-то в виду. What do you mean? И здесь, конечно, мы не можем поставить его в continuous, потому что он stative. Но мы также можем намереваться что-то сделать. И вот с оттенком намерения, intention, например, I've been meaning to call you. Я вот собирался и собирался тебе позвонить. Здесь намерение. И здесь мы можем поставить его в continuous. Глагол see. Uh, do you see what I mean? В значении понимать что-то. Um, yes, I see what you mean. Мы не можем употребить его в continuous. Но в значении посещать кого-то, наносить кому-то визит или провожать кого-то, например, до дома, это уже глагол dynamic, и мы можем употребить его в continuous. Глагол smell и глагол taste имеют некую схожую логику в своем употреблении. Когда что-то имеет какой-то запах, то есть это категория perception, о чем мы говорили в предыдущей лекции, мы не можем поставить эти глаголы в continuous. Что-то как-то пахнет, что-то имеет какой-то вкус. Это некое состояние. Но когда мы что-то нюхаем, или когда мы что-то пробуем, это обычный наш dynamic verb. И в этом случае, конечно, мы можем, и если этого требует контекст, даже должны употребить его в continuous. И глагол think в своем основном значении полагать, выражающее, выражающее какое-то свое мнение. Да? Я думаю, что он не прав. Мы выражаем наше мнение. И бывает, что мы выражаем процесс обдумывания чего-то, раздумывания над чем-то. В русском очень часто мы здесь используем приставки да? раз, об и так далее, когда мы выражаем некий мыслительный процесс, мы размышляем над чем-то, да, по-английски we are reflecting on something, я вот здесь подумываю продать машину, да, или я тут думаю уже какое-то время, I've been thinking of and about selling my car. Now let's have a look at some more examples. He is a tall man, he is always tall, this is his 
permanent characteristics, right? It doesn't depend on anything. He is just uh, what he is. He is a tall man. But if we say, if we say he is just being difficult, да он просто придуряется, да он просто специально вставляет нам сейчас палки в колеса, да? Есть вольный перевод в зависимости от контекста, от конкретного контекста, который нам нужно передать. Но главное здесь то, что глагол to be становится у нас уже не stative, а dynamic, потому что это он именно сейчас так себя ведет. Здесь уже от оттенок поведения, а не некой постоянной характеристики, которая ему всегда присуща. It tastes good. Что-то хорошо на вкус, что-то очень вкусно. Нам так кажется. Здесь глагол выражает нашу, наше perception, наше восприятие вкуса, и он, конечно же, stated. But in the following case, I am tasting the sauce. Я его пробую. То есть наш глагол taste уже становится активным глаголом. Dynamic verb. Он выражает действие пробования. То есть я вот прям вижу в голове, у меня рисуется картинка, я беру ложку или вилку, и я пробую что-то. I am tasting the sauce. В данном случае... Uh, поскольку глагол уже становится dynamic, uh, корректное и верное использование его в аспекте continuous. I think you are right. This is my opinion. My opinion is that you are right. В данном предложении я выражаю свое мнение, а не мыслительный процесс, не процесс обдумывания чего-то, а просто мнение. Я думаю, ты прав. Таково мое мнение. А вот в следующем предложении I've been thinking about what you said. Я здесь размышлял над тем, что ты сказала. Я здесь обдумывал то, что ты сказала. Здесь у нас на лицо а, длительный аспект и длительный прямо процесс обдумывания. Мы можем представить себе, как этот процесс протекал. Кто-то сидел и думал, склонив голову, да, или ходил и думал, что некая идея постоянно крутилась у человека в голове. И в русском языке, как я уже сказала, мы часто используем различные приставки э, с нашими глаголами. I've been thinking about what you said. И в данном случае, конечно же, наш глагол, наш глагол think is stated verb превращается в dynamic verb. И совершенно свободно мы можем использовать его в этом случае в аспекте continuous. I see what you mean. Понимаю, что ты имеешь в виду. Понимаю, о чем ты. Глагол see в данном случае у нас state of verb. Вижу в значении понимаю. Да? И глагол understand мы помним из предыдущей части лекции, что он у нас выражает некий мыслительный процесс. Поэтому он является у нас state of verb. И в следующем предложении I'm seeing the doctor tomorrow. Мы имеем в виду наше посещение, наш визит к врачу. I'm visiting. The doctor tomorrow. То есть глагол see уже теряет свое state of meaning и приобретает свое dynamic meaning. Мы даже переводим его другим глаголом на русский язык. Поэтому здесь для выражения э, ближайших наших планов, да, планов на завтра в данном случае, аспект continuous идеально выражает нашу мысль. I'm seeing the doctor tomorrow. And finally, we've come to the last fourth part of our lecture. Thank you very much for listening. It's just a little bit more. We're going to talk about stative verbs, verbs which are normally stative or usually stated, but sometimes if we add a little bit more emphasis to these verbs, they can get this dynamic meaning and can be used in their dynamic meaning. So it means that these stative verbs can be sometimes used in continuous aspect. So we can add ing to them and we can turn them a little bit into action verbs. Let's have a look at them. It usually happens when we describe something that we really, really want or we really, really need or we really, really expect. So it's what we want, need or expect and we want to add some emphasis to that that we really, really, really want, need or expect something. For example, I was really hoping you would call. It's also okay to say I hoped you would call. This will be more neutral and we know that the verb um, hope is um, 
a stative verb, right? So it expresses a state, not an action. This is our inner state. This is how we felt, right? We hoped. But if we really want to stress uh, this action of hoping, not just the feeling, but it, it becomes more of an action of hoping, we can use hope in continuous. So it can have dynamic usage. I was really hoping you would call in Russian. And we could translate into Russian, we could translate it um, as, for example, Я очень-очень-очень надеялась, что ты позвонил, да? Я, чтобы, что ты позвонишь. Я очень ждала, я очень хотела, очень надеялась. То есть, как правило, все вот эти оттенки, что мы чего-то хотим, и нам это нужно, и мы это ожидаем, они переплетаются между собой и находят вот выражение в английском языке таким лингвистическим способом, что глагол, который обычно у нас state of verb, становится dynamic. I was really hoping you would call. She is loving her time in Spain. Normally the verb love um, is a stative verb, right? It, it expresses again what we feel. It's our feeling, a feeling of love. But if we want to put some extra emphasis on that, like she's loving every second of her time in Spain, uh, it's okay to use it in continuous, but don't do it too often. This is something that happens in the language sometimes, and it is good to know, but don't start using it everywhere in continuous. That's not okay. Uh, another example here is what McDonald's um, uh, motto says. I'm loving it. Yeah, what they, what they're, what they do they use the verb love in continuous aspect, exactly using this rule to emphasize, to emphasize, to put a special emphasis on this process of loving the food. So what they actually mean is that I'm enjoying every bite of it, every bite of the burger or every sip of the Coke. I'm enjoying it every second. Uh, in this case, it's okay. Another example is with the verb need. I'll be needing some help with that. It's also fine to say I will need some help with that. This will sound a bit more neutral, but if you want to highlight, if you want to stress that you will really be needing some help uh, with something, it's okay to put it in continuous. Мне очень-очень-очень потребуется помощь. I'm not saying I will really, really, really be needing uh, because there is a special form in the language which it already exists for that. So this form, I will be needing, it already means I will really, really, really be needing some help. And the last thing I wanted to tell you about is that we can use the words always, forever or endlessly when we uh, want to express something which is happening all the time and it is irritating. So th something, there is an action which became a habit and this action and this habit is irritating us a lot. Something that we don't like but something that keeps happening all the time. Always, всегда, forever, вечно, endlessly, без конца, бесконечно, непрерывно, нету этому конца и края. For example, he is always forgetting his keys. Uh, normally, when we see always and when we see forget, forget is another uh, state of verb, yeah, which we can't put in continuous. These are two things that tell us don't use continuous aspect here. It is always simple aspect. He always forgets his keys. But if I say he always forgets his keys, it will sound neutral. It's okay if that's what I really mean. But if I want to say that I haven't, I've had enough of it. It's so irritating. I'm sick and tired of him forgetting his keys all the time. And I'm even using a special intonation when I'm saying it. He's always forgetting his keys. Uh, so it's, it's, it goes down three times. Yeah, he's always forgetting his keys. So in this case, it's okay and it's correct. And it's... Um, it's actually very correct to put it in a continuous aspect. He's always forgetting his keys. And that's about it what I wanted to share with you today. 
Thank you very much for listening or watching or for listening and watching. For more free lectures, please feel free to go to my website, loveenglishcoach.com slash blog. Bye for now.